Barry, um, I, I've been kind of amazed to see among uh, cosmologists a real disputation in terms of the multiverse, not in terms of its factuality, uh, in terms of, but in terms of whether it is uh, a proper subject for science and whether it is science as opposed to philosophy. And I say this to a philosopher, <laughs> if it's philosophy, it's kind of downgraded. <laughs> well, one place I'm sure we won't go from here is to another universe. <laughs> um, I do think that there are reasons to th think that the mu a multiverse, that is say more than one spatial temporal realm in which the laws might be a little bit different or the values of the fundamental constants might be a bit different, or the initial conditions might be a little bit different from the way they are in our universe. I think the notion makes sense, and I think it could arise and does arise as part of a theory that's claimed to be a scientific theory. And I think it's not a useful thing for the science police to go around and say, this is science and this isn't science. If philosophers did that, as some philosophers had, Karl, Karl Popper famously did that, I think that's a good way to not make friends among okay. scientists. Yeah, well, so, friends is not that important. Truth is more important than friendship. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I agree with that. But um, I don't think that's a good job for philosophers. I do think that there are big problems with the two kinds of theories that people have introduced, which have suggested that there's more than one universe. Universes in which, say, there are copies of people sitting around yeah. giving a uh, gig uh, involving talking about the multiverse that look like me and you and so on. Now this idea does come up in philosophy, but for totally different reasons that we're not talking about now. It, it also comes up in two ways in science. One in an understanding quantum mechanics and the so-called Everett Many Worlds understanding of quantum mechanics, and another one in inflationary cosmology that sometimes gets connected together with ideas in string theory. Um, in the case, in, in the Everett case, I think what's the right thing to say is there that look, there's a problem understanding what the ontology of quantum mechanics is. What a quantum mechanics hands you as a mathematical object is something called the wave function and a way of interpreting it as, as uh, describing some sort of quantum mechanical state that itself describes many possible ways in which things are, many universes. Um, I think this is an interesting idea that Everett thought up in the 1950s but I don't think it works out very happily, mainly because quantum mechanics is essentially a probabilistic theory, which is different from saying it's an indeterministic theory, and you can't make sense of probabilities within that. Within that. But there are many smart people who disagree with me about that. Within inflationary cosmology, there's the idea that the process of inflation, the accelerated expansion leads. of the universe early time, leads inevitably to the production of many so-called pocket universes. I think this is a big problem for inflation, not a good thing. Some inflationary cosmologists, for example, Andre Lind, thinks it's a great thing because he likes to say, he likes the idea that whatever is not forbidden is permitted, because that's the way American politics <laughs> works, unlike Soviet politics, <laughs> in which everything that's not permitted <laughs> is forbidden. I think that's good in politics, but very bad in epistemology. <laughs> And the problem is this, that if the universe is produced, if there are many universes being produced who, with different features from our universe, then the fact that we find that our universe has certain features can't really provide any evidence for an inflationary theory in the first place. Okay, and this is a point that's been made by the cosmologist Paul Steinhardt, one of the invest inventors of cosmology, and has led to a big fight among cosmologists about this, which I have a little teeny part in it because I'm a philosopher of cosmology and I'm writing something about it, but I basically think that Steinhardt is right. So it's not a question of it's not being science. Yeah, but, yeah, but you're, you're saying this, there shouldn't be science police, and yet you're saying the people who are criticizing it are right. It sounds like you're part of the science police. The science police says what you're doing isn't science. I'm saying, no, I don't want to say that. I want to say it's science with a bad problem, and you guys should recognize the problem. Now, the, some of them do recognize the problem. For example, Alan Guth, the inventor of inflation, along with Steinhardt and Linda, um, Guth was the original inventor, um, he recognizes a problem, and he realizes that to solve the problem of the multiverse, he needs to introduce a probability measure over the 
possible the universes that are introduced. This within is called the measure problem in cosmology, very different from the measurement problem in quantum mechanics. And the measure problem is adding to inflationary cosmology a probability measure over these universes. But nobody has figured out what that measure should be or what could make it the right measure. I think that the problem is very likely not to be solvable, but that's a complicated argument. I think Guth is right to recognize it as a problem. Sean Carroll, another writer on this who's an inflation fan, thinks it's a problem too, and he thinks he could, it's going to be solved. He even thinks he may have solved it. But I think it's very difficult to solve. It's fine with me, and I'm not thinking as a police. I, the police should, shouldn't be going around saying it's not science. What, they, what critics could say, though, is there's a problem here, and you guys need to solve it. And I think some of the advocates of inflation agree with that.